wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Vagabond. Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the Savior because He healed my heart. He changed my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe. Doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness, you can't just keep them moving. Now you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing about. Soul, this wayward son has found his way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. In hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, oh, I am free. In hell lost another one, I am free. Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. Amen. Amen. Welcome to worship this morning, everyone. Happy Easter. So glad to see you all this morning on this awesome, blessed Easter morning. It's fun to see also, obviously familiar faces, but also those who we don't get to see as often, or maybe even some new faces that are joining with family um, or coming back from school or whatever it might be. Just so thankful to have all of you guys here. So thanks for joining us. Just a few announcements before we continue with worship this morning. Um, the women's Bible study is starting on April 2nd, so there's more info on that in your bulletin if you would like to join um, on that, with them on that. They're doing a Mount Asbury Spring cleanup on the April 27th. Um, would love some help with that. And there's a sign up on the bulletin board outside of the office. And then I just wanted to mention again the Daughter Disciple Luncheon that's coming up with the Greater Grace Bible Fellowship that has invited us to join them for that. Um, and that's on April 20th at 12 p.m. So if you would like to join that, please get in contact with Hattie Ogle for that. Are there any announcements that I didn't mention that people wanted to highlight this morning? Okay, 
Great. Well, we are going to continue with worship this morning. Um, and again, just talking about, obviously, the story of Jesus' um, resurrection on this awesome day. And a lot of our songs are just going to be themed around how the Lord takes broken um, and terrible and, and dark things and turns them into things of beauty and things of promise and things of hope. Um, and that's exactly what this next song that Chris is going to lead us in is about. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. You came along and put me back together, and every desire. Now satisfied here in love, yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, that's it.
Amen. We're going to continue on in worship with a gospel reading from Matthew 28. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. Their guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell in a, into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Do not be afraid, he said. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he, would, he said he would happen. Come see where his body was laying, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you.
you guys can take a seat. At this time, we're going to go into our joys and concerns. It's really special, obviously, every week to be able to share these with each other. I think even more so now that we have probably some people in the room that folks have been, you know, talking about and praying for, as we've mentioned in earlier weeks, as far as just family traveling safely from home, um, you know, loved ones that have been going through illnesses or sickness, and I know some of you folks still have those people uh, in your lives who are um, going through that, and it's especially tough during a holiday season, so um, with those things and just everything else going on in our lives and the busyness and excitement uh, and the company that we, you know, keep during holiday seasons, it's just always good to come back and, and ground ourselves and, and think about intentionally um, how we can be praying for each other and not only the people in these walls, but those folks that are in our family that might not be inside the walls of our church, as well as, um, you know, complete strangers and things happening across the world. So I just want to continue to pray for as far as concerns, um, again, continued safe travels for everyone who's coming into town or leaving town after this weekend um, for families, and especially for those two, like I mentioned, who have folks who have loved ones that are, you know, sick or maybe in the hospital and not able to be with us for the holidays. I know that can be especially tough. Um, it's hard, you know, every day seeing the people that we love struggle and go through hard things, but especially when, you know, a lot of times the rest of the family is gathering and we might not be able to be with them or maybe just not in the same capacity that we would like, um, continuing to pray for, for those folks and for peace and joy um, during this Easter season. Are there any other concerns that folks wanted to add to our list this morning, people that we can be praying for or situations? Yeah, Philip. Yeah, again, yeah, just the violence happening across the world, um, you know, especially those involving folks and, and loved ones from um, our country and, and that we know, and just keeping them safe, um, again, during these intense and, um, you know, beautiful holiday seasons. Again, just another situation where maybe not sickness, but folks who have loved ones overseas even who might be serving, and um, it's definitely a difficult time for them too, so be praying for that. Any other concerns this morning? quiet this morning. Um, I know that, like I always say, there's things that you might not be willing to share or wanting to share in, in, a, in a large group, um, but we'll be continuing to pray for you guys um, for those matters that, um, you know, might not be shared out loud, but we know that are going on in um, either the silence of your hearts or just the confidence of your families or whatever it might be. Um, we'll be continuing to pray and, and intercede for you on those things, so. Just know that you have a church body who's who's praying for you and cares about you. What about joys this morning? There's a lot to be thankful for this morning. Let me hear some of those things. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. Wow. Yay. Congratulations. Is that an exciting or daunting thing for doing more school? Exciting. Great. I love that mentality. For me, after I got out, I was like, I'm never doing school again. So <laughs> more power to you. I'm excited for you. That's super exciting. So congrats. Any other joys? Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we've had some great weather, which I'm very thankful for. I wasn't freezing my fingers off at the sunrise this morning, thankfully. But yeah, that Easter egg hunt, it sounded amazing. I was unfortunately not able to be here, but I saw the setup yesterday when we came in to do a little bit of practice, and I was like, man, this is going to be a whole affair, and it, uh, it sounded like it was. So it's awesome. Such a great turnout, and I'm glad that folks got and kids got to experience that in the community, for sure. I'll keep going on. The sunrise service was beautiful. It was a good turnout for that, too, and it was just nice weather being able to you know, reflect on that uh, beautiful morning as well. So thanks to all who joined us for that. And also big thanks to Harry and the rest of the veterans. I know some of you are in here who helped out with that, with the breakfast in between services too. It's a huge blessing for all of us and I'm very thankful for that. So thank you guys. Any other joys? I see one back there. Madison's birthday this week. 
Well, happy early birthday, Madison, and thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> you did great. Any other joys this morning? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing. I know that a lot of you guys probably have a lot of fun plans, hopefully for the rest of your day, I'm visiting family and spending some time with folks that we love, and I'm very thankful for that as well. Um, but yeah, we'll just take the rest of, of this time in this service, as, you know, before Pastor Steve comes to speak and after as well to just, again, continue to reflect on the whole journey of, of Easter and, and Jesus's journey through that um, you know, this season, and we've been able to reflect on pieces of it on the weeks leading up to it, and, you know, the excitement of, of Palm Sunday, and um, the tragedy and, and sadness of, of Good Friday, this past Friday, um, and now we get to see all of that um, that led up to this, and see the full picture, and rejoice in the fulfillment um, of, our, of our faith in the resurrection of Jesus, um, and I'm just loving uh, continuing to um, praise in that way and, and sing these songs and reflect on these songs that display th the full picture of that journey, not only the sacrifice that he made and our, you know, our nature that led him to um, the cross, but his redemptive um, choice, you know, to send his son in Jesus to be sacrificed for us and then um, make our faith whole or being resurrected um, on that third day. So just continue to reflect on that as we go into um, prayer and, and I lead this um, last song before we go into prayer. Um, and what that journey meant, not only um, for, you know, obviously the whole of our faith and our, our body of believers here, but just you individually and um, what the Lord has done for you and, and continues to do for you in your life. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by every stone, Messiah still.
in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face sing that verse again he shall return shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face joy that you bring into this world. Lord, that we are alive in you. As the old hymn goes, because you live, we can face tomorrow and all fear is gone. So as we come unafraid this day, bless us so that we might go forth to the truth of the life that is found in you. Lord, as we come, Fill us with your spirit. Anoint us. Fit us for your work. Spreading your love and your hope in this world. Lord Jesus, Lord of all things, even Lord over death. We praise you today. We pray all of these things in your victorious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And before I uh, read our scripture, I'd actually like to do our children's sermon now, because I have a treat I'd like to give our kids. So I'm going to invite our children to come forward. All right. Grab a seat up here. All right. Now, how's everyone doing? Here it comes. Hey. All right. Now, you can all join in on this. I, I have a challenge I want you to try. I found this online, okay? I want you to hold your two hands up, okay? Holding two hands up. Now, on this hand, fold your fingers in, so just your thumb's sticking up. Sorry, you can keep it back there. <laughs> so, all right? And on this hand, fold your finger and your thumb just so your pinky's out, okay? So one hand, thumb up. Other hand, pinky up, okay? Now. On the count of three, I want you to try to switch them, right? So you're going to put your thumb down and your pinky out, and you're going to put your thumb up and your pinky in, right? Like that. Everyone got it? 
Okay. You all try it, right? Got it? Got it? Got it? All right. Easy, right? All right. Let's try it. One, two, switch. Did you do it? You did it? Did I do it? No. No. I did not do it. Let's try it again. Let's see. I try it again. All right. All right. One, two, go. Now, okay, I'm not the only one. I can't do this, okay? There is something in my brain that will not let this pinky come in. I don't know what it is. I try it over and I, if I do it really slow, I can do it. But if I try to do it fast, I can't figure it out. Now, some of you could do it, right? Right? But you ever, you ever find stuff you can't do? You ever have that happen? You find something that you try and you try and you just can't do it? Well, today is Easter. And Easter is kind of about celebrating that there's something that we couldn't do, right? That we couldn't have eternal life. And Jesus died on the cross, and Jesus rose again on Easter to give us something that we couldn't get on our own. No matter how hard we try, no matter what we do, we couldn't have eternal life. But because Jesus died for our sins and rose again, we have eternal life. And so everything's possible for you. I can't do the finger thing, right? But Jesus allows us to do anything in the Lord, right? Jesus makes up for the places that we can't, okay? So that's what we celebrate today. Can I say a prayer with you guys? Lord, I thank you for my friends here. I thank you that, Lord, you rose for them, that they might rise with you. We give thanks for that this day. and pray all this in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And um, I have, let's see. I got to get my regular ones too. Okay, so you have a choice. I got some chocolate ones, okay, but I also have, I don't know what my regular ones are. I'll get him some regular ones later. Oop, yep, now you won't. Okay. <laughs> I'll get him one later. You got him? Okay. Okay. Go ahead and grab one. Go back to your seat. There you go. All right. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, as we turn to our scripture today, it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the story of the resurrection as contained within that gospel, the 28th chapter, the first of the 10th verses. The gospel reads this way. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Our second scripture comes to us from the book of Romans. And it's Paul speaking about living into that resurrection. It's the sixth chapter, the fourth of the eleventh verses. Paul's words read this way. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with 
that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks for it today. We come here to celebrate today. To celebrate the end of our holy week, to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. This week we have a lot of different services throughout Holy Week, right? We have Maundy Thursday, okay? Got to keep all the names straight. And then on Friday we celebrate, what do we call Friday? Good Friday, right? The amount of times I hear people in Holy Week talk about Friday and call it Black Friday is astounding, right? Easy mistake to make, right? In, in a lot of ways, it seems like a more appropriate name, right? For the day we remember Jesus' death. But Black Friday is the day we celebrate by going and spending a lot of money, okay? We have a lot of moments that we celebrate. Good, and these names are important because they mean something. They bring us to today, and what are we celebrating today? Easter. Now, this day actually also has another name within our church history. Does anyone know it? It's called Resurrection Day or Resurrection Sunday, okay? Now, I kind of like that name more, right? And the reason I like that name more is it's a lot more specific about what we're doing here today, right? If you ask someone, they say, we're celebrating Easter, that can mean a lot of different things in our society, can't it, right? That might mean I'm going to church to, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It could also mean I'm going somewhere to look for eggs, right? It could also mean I'm going somewhere to eat ham, right? We can celebrate Easter in a lot of different ways, and you can do all those things. Go eat your ham, your eggs, right? But there's something different about being a person of faith and coming and celebrating Easter. The resurrection, when you say to someone, I'm celebrating Resurrection Day, your intention's a lot more clear, isn't it? It's a lot more clear about what you're celebrating. You're not just celebrating a day on the calendar or a cultural event. You're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection in your life. And the reason I like that is because it forces us to make a choice about what we believe. Because really, this day and what we believe about this day, whether we're celebrating the resurrection or not, is the thing that defines us as Christians, defines us as people of faith, as Paul helps to remind us, because we are resurrected with Christ. We hope to be resurrected with Christ. We better know what we believe about the resurrection of Christ. What do you believe in this world? So I was doing preparation for the sermon. I came across an interesting story from the year 1950, a story that happened at a small Baptist church in Nebraska, See, at this Baptist church, every single week at 7.20 on Wednesday night, they had choir practice, okay? Much like any other churches. There were 15 members of their choir. Now, on this particular March 1st of 1950, that night, people were late. They weren't normally late for choir, but they happened to be late on that night. The pastor and his wife were late because they were getting ready to go over early, and they noticed that her dress was soiled. So she had to get another dress out and press it and get it ready. So they were running late. There was two high school students who were running late because they were struggling with their geometry homework and they needed to finish it before they could go. There was another man in the choir who was having car trouble. His car wouldn't start and he wasn't able to get to the church on time. There was another woman who said it was cold outside and she was just lazy. There was one woman, the church, the piano player, who wasn't able to be there on time because she made dinner, she ate it, and then she fell asleep in the chair. Every single member of that choir, every single member of those 15 people was late that particular night. Choir practice was supposed to start at 720. 
At 725 on March 1st of 1950, that church exploded from a gas leak. And yet, not a single member of that choir was in the building when it happened. Because each and every one of them, for some odd, weird, unexplained variety of reasons, found themselves not there that night. Now, interesting choice of where you stand in life or what you believe happened, right? Because you have two choices. Either you believe that every single one of those 15 people should have gone out that night and purchased a lottery ticket, right? Because they hit the mother of all coincidences, that all of those people had something happen, those people who were always at choir, always ready, that they weren't there on that night. Or God was at work. Or God was at work in that church, in that moment, in their lives to keep those people from being there when that explosion happened, that gas leak explosion. Now, I'm not telling what you got to believe about this church in Nebraska. But it's a question that's posed to us on Resurrection Day. What do we believe happened that morning at the empty tomb? What do we believe as people of faith? Do we believe what our world tells us is impossible, right? That somebody who had just died a few days ago, who had holes in their hands and their feet, a hole in their side from a spear, walked out of that tomb, breathed, was alive in body. Do we believe that? Or do we believe it's all a story? Just something told to make people feel better. Now to believe that, you have to believe that it was a story that was told by hundreds and hundreds of people who saw the same risen Christ. A story that people were willing to die for, even though there was nothing for them to gain from telling that story. They were willing to be executed, imprisoned, and tortured for saying that they had seen the risen Christ. That all of the people who have experienced Jesus, that that is all a lie. Why I like calling this Resurrection Day is it's about us making a stand about what we believe. That we do believe that we serve the Lord of all who walked out of a tomb, who drew breath again, who is the master over death. We are the people of the resurrection. We are the people who have faith and believe. And that's what today is about, reaffirming that we believe that Jesus is alive. Not just at that day at the tomb, but alive forevermore. And that we are alive in Christ. Who are we and what do we believe? Today is about being clear about that. That we are the people of the resurrection. It's about that. But what do we do if we believe that? How do we respond to the resurrection in our life? Have you ever had one of those life-changing moments? One of those things where you chart your life before and after it? One of mine involves a fast food restaurant. You'll be shocked to know. Okay? And it was the first day I ever, as a kid, ate a Wendy's cheeseburger. Okay? The reason why, those of you who are aficionados might know, fast food aficionados, okay? What is unique about the default topping of a Wendy's cheeseburger as opposed to McDonald's or Burger King or somewhere else? What do they put on it? Anyone know? Oh, you're all mayo. Wendy's puts mayonnaise on their burgers. When I was a kid, I did not take time to check what was on the burger. I did not take time to look. And I bit into that Wendy's burger, and I was horrified to find that there was mayonnaise on it. Now, I was horrified because if you've ever been into something and something you're not expecting, it's a terrifying time, right, in your life. But then I stopped, and I chewed, and I savored, right? swallow the food, and realize that my life was never going to be the same again, right? Because in that moment, mayo became a staple topping of cheeseburgers for me, right? It will not shock you that I've eaten a number of cheeseburgers in my life, right? And so now, whether we're eating it at home, whether I have to add it at McDonald's or whatever it is, I'm getting mayo on that cheeseburger, okay? 
I can chart my life before and after. It's a life-changing experience eating that cheeseburger for the first time, okay? Now, you probably have moments like that in your life, and they're probably more important than your choice of cheeseburger topping, right, and condiments. But we have things that happen that demand a change in us, that demand something different in the way we function, in the way that we live our lives. And today, it's not just about what it is that we believe, but how you respond to that belief, right? If you believe that a man walked out of a tomb, like we've talked about, that belief demands something of you, right? If you believe that to be true, if you believe that God has that power and that God did all of that for you, that has an impact on how you live your life, about how you walk through your journey. It's a lot more important than what you put on cheeseburgers. It demands something of you. Paul shares that when he talks about living into being a Christian. He says, you died with Christ the day that you acknowledged that faith. The day that you believed Jesus rose from the grave for you, you are crucified with Christ in that day. You have died to sin, but you have risen with Jesus. That's what it is to have a resurrected life. Not to just believe in the resurrection, but to live it out. To allow that faith and that belief to change who you are. To live differently because Jesus is alive in your life. And that's our testament to faith, my friend. That's the greatest testament that we can give to the world is as we go forth, as we walk among the people of this world, we do so with a hope, faith, peace, and love that doesn't come from us, but that comes from Jesus. We shared earlier with the kids the finger thing that I can't pull off. Jesus does something for us we can't do. He gives us something the world can't provide. The resurrection makes us something new. It sets us apart. It demands our life, our hope, and our all. So as we come together today, as we celebrate, as we continue to sing and we continue to worship, it's because of what we believe, and that defines who we are. We are Christians, but we are believers of the resurrection. We believe that life is possible in the midst of death, that hope is possible in the midst of sorrow, that life everlasting is possible in Christ Jesus. And that demands everything of us. And so as we prepare this day to go forth out into a world, taking the resurrection, that truth with us, living it out in such a way that people see it, that they might come to know, their own faith, that life, and that joy everlasting. And so I'm going to invite our praise team to come up and help us as we prepare to go forth, but I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and let's be in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, as we come together as people of the resurrection, Lord, we ask you again for your life to flow through us, through your people gathered here, Lord, we are never the same because of you. You transform us. You lift us up. You justify us. You sanctify us. And Lord, we are glorified in you. So Lord Jesus, you are Lord of all. Lord, even over death. Lord, over despair. Lord, over all the suffering. Lord, all of it pales in comparison to your glory. So, Lord, be, be risen here, now and in our midst. Lord Jesus, we pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Amen, buddy. All right, we have two more songs in to close out the service for you. So if you stand and worship with us. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin 
Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, so free, washes I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend.
party in the presence of my enemies. You invite me to the table and you tell me just to sit in peace. You are not afraid when the terror screaming loud at me. Cause you have overcome and you're the God of victory. of my enemies you invite me to the table and you tell me just to sit in peace oh, you are not afraid when the terror is screaming loud at me cause you have overcome and you're the God of victory but when I'm dancing on the grave the ones tell me down dancing on the chains that are laying on the ground I'm dancing out the dark I'm lying your joy becomes a weapon, and now you need to fight. Yeah. When I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will not fear death. I know you're by my side, and you'll never leave me by myself. So even when I'm weary, you are calling me to come and rest. Cause you cannot be stopped, you have already defeated hell. Oh, you cannot be stopped, you have already defeated hell. And I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound. Dancing on the chains that are laying on the ground. I'm dancing out the dark, I'm lighting up the night. Your joy becomes a weapon, and I am here. The enemy may be all around me, but I'm running free, cause you set me free. as we go. That seems like a good number for today. All right? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Second time louder than that. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And one more time as we go forth as people of the resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Be blessed. And I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound. I'm dancing on the chains that are laying on the ground.